Hey there everyone, and welcome to another video. In this video, well, I'm taking a look... Well, first of all, I'm starting a bit of a new series, probably not even a series, where I'm going to be, well, looking at pieces of code that I get sent by my friends and stuff like that. And in, in this case, my friend Richie. Um, and I'm going to look at these pieces of code because they have a problem in them, and they have a bug in them that I need to fix, because, well, they don't know how. And I'm going to show you guys how I fix these bugs, and how to fix them on your own, How what goes into debugging them, and stuff like that. So, let's run the program, um, and see what we get. Now, this is a simple program. It's a Windows Forms application that, simply, simply put, it's basically a BIOS mockup for a new histocom rewrite. And, well, I have no idea what this is supposed to look like. I've only seen one of the resources and this piece of code. But I have no idea what the design is or anything like that. Uh, so this is going, going to be a brand new debug session for me. Brand new code base, and let's have a look at it. So all we need to do is run it in Visual Studio, and immediately, right away, we get a simple null reference section. Now, you'll see my debug workflow is kind of customized. And this is the same one I use for PCNet. And not only do I get the exception information like you handle within Visual Studio, but I can also see the process memory usage, I can see the CPU usage, uh, all that stuff I need to know. Um, I can see the call stack for the exception right here. And I can see the um, variables that are declared within the class and in the current scope and what they are and I can look into them and see what their properties and variables are and I can even like I can even go into a Windows form property uh, in this case the value of this which in C sharp means the current object and I can have a look at not only the public properties and their values but I can also go deep into well, once we get to the bottom here, I can see protected values, private values, internal values, fields, and I can do all that stuff, so it's very useful. So as, as you can see, I can see the x value and the y value, which are actually private variables. Um, I can also see static members, not that I need to. Now, when it comes to a null reference exception like this, the trick is to look in, into your locals or your autos tab, and or like I do. Um, first of all, we want to look at the exception, and we want to see its stack trace. And first of all, we know our message is this, or the null reference exception message. And we want to look at the stack trace, and we can see that it is in fact here, so it's not being thrown by or by something inside that uh, method. The label one up font, and right away, so we know that label one dot font is what we're trying to s set a property of, and we're looking. We're basically setting it to a new font in the private font collection, from what I can see. Now, label 1, of course, is going to be a value inside of this, because it's Windows Forms, and we just need to look towards the bottom here, where we just were. We're going to look for that variable within... Oh, I scrolled right by it. Scrolled right by it again. My eyes are confusing me. We, we want to look at it in our locals tab, of course. So this dot label one, and as you can see, I can see the value, and it is. If we zoom in here, it is null, which is not too good. Um, this is a problem. In C sharp, when you try to set the property or a property of a null value, you get a null reference exception, and well. Since the label 1 is null, when we go to set label 1.font, we're going to get that error. So, simple fix. We need to make sure that label 1 is not null. Now, if I stop debugging, another thing we can do 
is we can right click on a method and we can click peak definition and this will show us the code of that method and you'll see that in this method uh, private void initialized component this is where label one gets set to a new instance of system.windows.forms.label and as you can see um, we are getting our label one dot font property setter called before initialized component which is a problem because initialized component is what initializes the label and sets it to an actual value instead of null and it is being called after we set the property of the label one's font so to fix this it's a simple reorder our code except my control z isn't working because that's not the key i want to press i want to press control z or x and control v and we'll paste it down there and we'll see if it runs and as you can see we get a windows forms window and a, and this is what it looks like and now we are getting some more issues here with the little braces here in the zero i'm assuming this is a string format um we'll see what the rich does with that but that is all I need to do. I'm to package the code up and send it back to him. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.